This is my 2002 BMW. I've had this car for the last six years and it has been absolutely amazing. But if I had to choose one thing that I don't like about this car, it would be this. Because being a 20 and something years old car, the battery inside of this key fob has died. And that means that I am no longer able to lock and unlock the car remotely. So that means that, for example, every time I need to take my stuff out of the trunk or boot, first I need to go to the driver's side, unlock the car manually, then go back to the trunk, grab my stuff, to then go back to the driver's side again to lock the car manually. So when, th when this happens, you are supposed to go to the BMW dealership and spend approximately 120 euros uh, to buy a new key because these keys uh, are not really serviceable items so I don't really agree with this and that's why in today's video first I'm going to show you how to change the battery in one of these BMW diamond keys and in the second part I'm going to make this permanently serviceable using 3d printing technology so with that said let's get to work so I have two keys for my car and as I said at the beginning of this video they are not really meant to be serviceable items and that means that we don't have any kind of screws at the back of it that we could use to disassemble them so that means that we'll have to use uh, a method that's a little bit destructive to the key and by that I mean taking a knife and cutting along this line over here all the way across the whole perimeter of the key until we uh, gain access to the printed circuit and the battery that's inside of here. So being very careful and setting the knife on the lowest position, let's cut very gently all the way across the key and pop it open. So this is the printed circuit that we were looking after. As we can see, we have our three bottoms here on the top side. And on the bottom side, we have our battery. This is a VL2020 Panasonic Japan 3 volt battery. And one interesting thing that I would like to point out here is that BMW claims that this battery is rechargeable, but I don't see any kind of wires or metal contacts going through uh, from the printed circuit to the metal part of the key. So if I had to take a guess, I would say that by the looks of this metal coil over here, this battery must be charged using some kind of uh, alternating magnetic fields or something like that. But once again, I don't really know. So if any of you guys know the right answer to this, please let me know in the comment section down below. Anyway, let's grab our soldering iron and actually detach this old battery from the circuit. Now that we have this old battery removed, we can safely buy a new one and install it. Now 
Now that we have this new battery installed, we have to go to the car to synchronize the key. Here I have the key temporarily taped with some masking tape, just so I can hold it all together during this procedure. So to synchronize the key with the car, all that we need to do is to insert the key into the ignition, switch it to the first position, switch it off, remove the key, press the unlock doors button and this button three times. And the it doesn't work. So if you followed the procedure from earlier and your key didn't synchronize, check your fuse number 67. Mine was completely missing. I'm talking about this guy over here. The one that's next to the one that's 30 amps. And chances are that if you fix the fuse, that light will start working again. So now, to synchronize the key, all you need to do is to insert the key into the ignition, turn it to the first position, turn it off, press this button and this button three times. And your key is now synchronized. You need to do this with the doors closed, but the windows can be rolled down, it doesn't matter. Now, if all you wanted to do was to replace the battery, you can glue these two halves together and you will be perfectly fine. But I would like to go a little bit further. So let me explain. I want to design a plastic piece that can hold these two parts together. And for that, I have two basic requirements. First and most important of all is that I want it to be functional. I want to be able to hold the key comfortably in my hand and be able to start the vehicle without any problems, just as before. And the second one is that I wanted to follow the design language of the key. I don't want it to visually feel out of place. So the second part is going to be challenging to achieve, but hopefully I can figure something out. So let's trace the basic outline of the key fob, throw it on Fusion 360 and print it. And this is what we get on iteration zero. I say iteration because that is the approach I'm taking with this. I will do a bunch of iterations, starting with simple geometric figures. And once I figure the exact general proportions of the key fob, I'll start building all of these complex shapes. So let's see. It seems like we have a little bit of play on the sides here so I will start by removing some, some material from here it looks like a millimeter on the top and maybe two millimeters on the bottom the idea behind this is to first find a hexagonal shape in which every side will touch the outline figure of the key fob tangentially and as you can see this took me several tries. Once that was done, I started applying a simple algorithm on every corner of my model. And this algorithm goes like this. First you pick a corner and place a line on it tangential to the figure of the key fob, which will give you two points of intersection. Then you measure the distance from those points of intersection to the center of the corner and bring those dimensions to your model in Fusion 360. Then, you print your model, place it on the key fob, and repeat these steps until you get a result that works for you. In my case, this took me approximately 16 iterations. Here, be cautious of the law of diminishing returns, as with every iteration, the number of corners doubles. Which means that, at a certain point, you will work with distances so small that it will be hard to track the changes with your eyes. So, once I got this main view of the key fob figured out, I did the same to both the side and bottom profiles, and combining the three of them yielded this rough 3D shape that I thought would be exactly the shape of the top half of the key fob. But, 
it was not. And you can see it here. You see, the geometry of this diamond key is too complex to be able to represent it with only three views. I would need at least a fourth one on a 70 degree angle. And I wasn't going to do that. I thought, there must be a tool that would allow me to extrude the profile using one of the views as a guide, while also allowing me to begin the extrusion with one profile and end it with another. And to my surprise, this already existed in Fusion 360. So extruding these two profiles using this view as a guide yielded this. So here I really got excited about this project. I repeated the same process for the other half of the key fob and with some minor adjustments ended up with this. And I wanted it to be a one piece solution, but sadly I couldn't figure out a design that would be flexible enough to allow me to assemble the key while also restricting the movement of the individual parts so the key doesn't accidentally disassemble itself during its intended use. And that's why I had to include this feature to accommodate a little clip that would allow me to securely attach all these parts together. So let's lay out all the parts and demonstrate how everything is assembled. The only thing that bothers me here is the gloss of the PLA but that's nothing that can be solved with some 180 grit sandpaper, a little bit of primer and a touch of matte black paint. And there you have it, a permanently serviceable BMW diamond key. No glue, no screws, no knife. I'm quite happy with how this turned out and it meets my initial requirements. It sits comfortably in my hand and now I can lock and unlock the vehicle remotely and it starts the engine just as before. And overall, I think I managed to follow the design language of the key fob, except maybe for this part over here, which I think I will redesign in the future. I hope you found this video interesting and if you have a BMW key and you would like to try this out for yourself, you can find a link to the SDL files in the description down below. That's all I have for you today and I'll see you in the next one. And meanwhile, I'm going to go to the kitchen, make myself a cup of coffee and have a little existential crisis over how I spent countless hours are ending this solution. A solution to a problem that an owner of a secondhand BMW will experience once in a decade. A problem that can be solved using 50 cents worth of super glue.